Well, this morning we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 11. And good morning, Ed. Good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? I think about you often. Um, Proverbs chapter 11. We're only going to look at the first seven verses of this proverb. Remember, we came out of Proverbs chapter 10 when when we saw that, that really the theme of that chapter was Solomon comparing the righteous to the wicked. And we stated that that word wicked in the Hebrew is really just an anonym to righteous. And sometimes what we think of as wicked is a horrid person. But really any steering off the path of righteousness, of what God would call us to rightness, to, to his righteousness of being obedient to his word in mind, in attitude, in speech, in talk, you know, uh, gossip, all those kinds of things, that, that any of that steering from the righteousness of God would be considered wickedness. And I think Solomon may have the same thing in mind as he goes to chapter 11 and begins to write these things. And the, the first seven verses, as I've, uh, as I've mined these verses and meditated on them, I think the key thing is that, that he's talking about the wicked person in relation to how they see their wealth or their possessions and a desire to gain more for their own personal, um, their own personal benefit and that they go to extended means, unrighteous means, to gain that kind of wealth. And so he begins saying here in verse 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 1, that a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is delight. A false balance. You, know, you get the picture of the mind of, of the old scales and how when the merchant uh, would, would put on one side the, his, his metered weights and then he might measure out the grain on the other side, and perhaps the, uh, the merchant had added a little bit more metal into what may be six ounces. And instead of being marked six ounces, where it's marked that, it's, it actually is seven ounces. And so, um, or excuse me, five ounces. And so uh, it would take more weight put on the other balance uh, to balance that out. And so it, 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 it's, a, it's a way of deception to gain riches. And he says that that kind of action is an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is God's delight. The principle there is, is that, that we be honest and have integrity with others. And then he goes on to verse 2. He says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. Or pride, uh, or, or, um, pride come up before the fall in some of your translations. But with the, with the humble is wisdom. I think there's a relation between verse 1 and verse 2. That there's an arrogance and there's a pride. And, and it typically follows in one who might try to gain wealth through wicked means. There's a haughtier than thou kind of attitude. And, and when pride is there, pride is that, that idea of self-exaltation. And people have in their minds sometimes that, that having a greater means or having more power and prestige through their wealth brings to pride. Somebody comes to mind right now that I know and many of you may know that was caught up in this area of pride and arrogance. And through crooked means, they, they deceived others into investing in their projects. And um, there was pride and arrogance that, that drove that. And be assured that there will be a fall. Pride comes before the fall. Then he goes back into verse 3, speaking of integrity. The integrity of the upright guides them. Of course, we know that that measure of integrity are the principles and precepts in God's Word. And so the integrity of the upright or the righteous person guides them but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Their crookedness will ultimately bring about their destruction from their deceptive ways of trying to gain. Riches, he says in verse 4, do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers them from death. In other words, when God's judgment comes, all that they've gained, all the wealth that they may have gained, the riches that they have gained, they cannot buy themselves out of God's wrath. That the day of judgment will come. 
Then he says in verse 5, the, righteous of the, bl- the righteousness of the blameless keeps his way straight, but the wicked falls by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the blameless, his right living, by living in integrity and the righteousness of God. Now, we all fall in many ways. I'm the first to admit that. We all do. None of us can say that we are without fault or without blame. But thank God for the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sin. Now, we can either listen to the Holy Spirit and, and, and veer back on a path of righteousness, or we can ignore the Holy Spirit, and our ends will be our own destruction. Because he said here, uh, he says that, that the righteousness of the blameless will keep their way straight. It will keep us on the path of righteousness. But the wicked falls by his own wickedness. In other words, he kind of sets his own trap that if a person continues in that means of wickedness, deception, and deceit, they've really set a trap for themselves. Sooner or later, they will get caught in their own trap. There's an old saying that says um, that a, a trapped animal will chew its own leg off to free himself. And we've seen that when we've seen those around, maybe those that we know, maybe those that were even a part of the church, that by their own scheming and devices, eventually they get caught in their trap. And they'll do anything they can to try to get out of that trap, even chew their own leg off. In other words, they'll bring themselves to their own destruction. The righteousness of the upright delivers them. Verse 7, he says, The wicked dies, his hope will perish, and the expectation of wealth perishes too. In other words, We can't put our hope in our wealth. We can't put our hope in our riches, especially if they've been gained through deceptive means and deceptive matters. Um, The wicked will find their own end. So the application for us in our lives today on these these first seven verses of chapter 11 is to examine our means and our, our, our motive for wanting to gain uh, are we willing to go to deceptive means, unethical means, in order to gain? You know, I've seen in my experience through the years, even in, in ministry, that I've seen many pastors, many church leaders get caught in the trap of trying to gain more and more, and they cloak it under a means of righteousness for God. And listen, even, even in that environment, it's easy to fall to the trap of of wanting riches and gain. It may not be for personal gain. It may be for ministry gain or kingdom gain, but the same thing drives that. It's a pride and it's an arrogance to want to be exalted um, above God. And so, again, the application for us is examine all of our desires. Examine whether or not we're walking in integrity in our business matters. Examine our integrity when we're wanting to cheat the guy maybe that comes to work on something at our house. It, 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 it meets out in every area of our life. Um, examine our means of wanting to try to beat somebody down on a price and not give them a fair price for their services. Um, integrity, a matter of wealth and riches, goes a lot deeper than just trying to steal money. It goes in every action and dealing we have with people to be just, to be honest, to be fair, and to walk in integrity. Guard our hearts against pride. May the Holy Spirit keep us from wanting to exalt ourselves and our own minds above Him. Because be be assured, as Solomon says here, that pride comes before the fall. I pray that God would bless you today, that He would keep you Um, May God use us today to plant a seed in somebody's heart and mind of the gospel. May God use us today to cultivate that seed that maybe has already been planted in that person's heart. And by God's grace, would he allow us to participate in him saving somebody today. Make that your prayer and be available to God for him to use you. Reminder to you that now our daily devotions are only Monday through Thursday. And so, Lord willing, I'll see you Monday on the Daily Devotion. And I pray that I'm able to see you this weekend, either in person or online, as we partake this Sunday in communion. If you're restricted to your house, um, you go ahead and gather 
your your elements there in your house, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be grape juice, um, whatever it might be, uh, a piece of bread, and participate with us online in communion. And uh, this Sunday, um, uh, as I announced last Sunday, we'll be introducing to you our new student pastor and his family. And so we want to welcome them to the body. We're excited that the Lord has provided this man and uh, looking forward to see what the Lord's going to do in that area of ministry. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day.